Good morning, New Beginnings Church of Life family. We're so glad that you're here. Now, let's prepare our hearts, minds, and bodies to worship Jesus together. Hear the Word of God and continue to give generously with great joy. talk with you today about uh, God's, God's future for the church. That will be the first slide you'll see up there. God's future for the church. And we're going to read from 1 Thessalonians. I don't have the scriptures on the screen for you there. So turn in your Bibles if you would. Because um, this is one of, the, one of the famous chapters that so many people who believe in the rapture uh, bring this scripture up, which is in Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. Now, not, every, not everyone believes in, in the rapture. Uh, just let you, let you know that. Not everyone believes that. Uh, not, in, not everyone believes with maybe my account of when the rapture takes place. So there's, uh, there's a lot of controversy about that. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, I, I still teach it. I, I put things on Facebook. And uh, when I get the most trouble from um, people on Facebook, and Facebook is one of those social medias that anybody can get trouble from, you know. Uh, but when I post something about the rapture, oh, the fur flies. You know, boy, there's a fur fly. You know, and, and just everyone's in there, and they're just, uh, uh, it reminds me of the chicken coop my grandfather used to have. You know, and the fur begins to fly. Uh, and also when I post something about the nation of Israel, particularly the nation of Israel and uh, how God is using them in the end times and how God has them there for a, a purpose and a plan. So um, uh, anyway, those are the two hot topics that, uh, that I always discover. But here, we're, I'm going to talk with you a little bit about rapture. We're going to look at, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 24 a little bit and also in the book of Revelation. So we have some places for you to go to with me. Uh, but look, look at this with me, uh, beginning with verse 13. Father, we just pray now as we read this that you will speak to our hearts. Yes that uh, every one of us will understand the Word of God, and that, Lord, we will look into ourselves introspectively, but we will also put our trust in God. And we ask, Lord, that you will, uh, you will touch the Word of God to, to our lives and to our hearts. May we apply it. And, Lord, we know that as we present this that, and as we understand this, we cannot do this by ourselves. I, I know I cannot do this without the, the touch and the move of the Spirit in my life. I need, I need God to help me. And all of us need God to help us to understand what you are doing in these days. Thank you. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, I have written four books. I'm, I'm working, I finished my fifth book, which I, I haven't put to the press yet. But uh, I, you, you would have to go on, on, on Amazon to see the books that I've written. And I don't have any of mine with me. I, I understand I am coming back again in another, another, another couple of months or so. I, I'm talking with Janine. I think we're, I'm coming back in January, I think, yes, something like that. Yes, so will. hopefully I'll have my books. I just sold out all my books that I had with me. And I can't carry a big stockpile of books anyway because it's so expensive. But when I do, and usually when I go someplace, uh, uh, like a church or two, the books are gone again. So I don't have any with me today. I just came back from Florida on a, because I was doing a, a marriage in Florida. Uh, and uh, so my books were gone. But so if you look at any of my name, you'll find them. I've written books like, written book like um, books like uh, The Cultural Collapse of America, and uh, that was about 15 years ago when I was discovering, even before that, what was happening to America and the changes that had taken place. Uh, and I wrote uh, another one, the most recent one is, is, it's not about politics, it's about prophecy. And there's so much contention about politics, uh, who should be the president, and the Democrats fight with the Republicans, etc. and one, one candidate type fights with the other one, etc. and it's almost like, oh my good lord. It's not about politics, because po God uses politics. It's, the politics is totally in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Right. There's, only, there's only two systems that's in the Bible. It's religion and politics. That's the only thing you find in the Bible. Every, everything centers around religion and politics. Or, or faith, or, or uh, as far as religion concerns, you might want to say faith, or belief, or Christ, or, or, or whatever you want to say, but it's, it's religious thought. There's only two things, religion and politics. 
And God uses the politics in order to bring about his prophetic plan. That's exactly what he does. And that was my latest book anyway. It's not about politics, it's about prophecy. So just to let you know where I'm coming from. I, I, I love America, but, but we're changing. And the changes are made because of what God is going to do in the Middle East, what he's, what he's going to do with nations from the Far East, what he's going to do with nations from the North, and how that's going to prepare for the second coming of Christ. And each of our presidents... Each of our presidents, whether you like them or not, have something little to do with the end times. As you study what they do, uh, and maybe we'll get into that just a little bit, just briefly here. So it's not about politics. It's about the prophetic word of God. Here it says in verse 13 of 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter, uh, chapter 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be, and I'm reading from King James, so whatever translation you have is fine. I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or at rest is what the, uh, what the Greek points out to, to us, to, to be laid down metaphorically, to be appointed by God, you know, that we're in that state of sleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. We, we have hope. Others don't have hope. For if we believe <clears throat> that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep and uh, sleep in Jesus will God bring with him? He's bringing the souls with him. He's bringing those spirits with him. Those spirits, uh, when your spirit dies, your spirit returns to God, the Old Testament tells us. And so when, you, when you're with God, when, then when God's going to come back to this earth and come for the saints who are alive, he's going to bring those spirits with him. Uh, and so it says then in verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, which is the panacea, the catching up, of the Lord shall not prevent them or will not stand in the way that of those who are sleeping or those who are dead because God is bringing those spirits with him anyway. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, that would be you and I, should Jesus say, come this afternoon. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up that, that, that word is, um, means to be snatched up, to be plucked up, to be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And therefore, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So it's important for you to, to have an understanding that the coming of the Lord is for a comfort. It's not a scare tactic. It's, it's not like what some of the movies predict that all these, uh, that's going to be terrible for us. It's going to be a wonderful time. There may be some, of course, we know after the rapture, there's going to be a tribulation, which is uh, going to be difficult times in the world. But this tribulation is actually the last confrontation between, basically the last, uh, between God and the devil. There is one more following the millennium when the devil is released for a season. But still, that's the final confrontation. Uh, that will be a part of it as well. So that's what the tribulation is about, the final confrontation where the devil and God, which are the only two powers in the Bible, by the way, I said there's only two systems, religion and politics, that's all there is, everything centers around religion and politics, same way with the powers in the Bible, there's only two powers in the Bible, God and the devil, there's all kinds of kings and prophets and priests and everybody else, but they all come under the umbrella of God and the devil, that's the only power there is in the Bible, God and the devil, and only religion and politics, that's all you'll find, everything else centers around those four concepts, God of the devil, religion, and politics. So, uh, I, I, want, I want you to understand that there's been a cry for peace in Jerusalem. That, that's, that's what I want you to understand. A, a cry is there for peace in Jerusalem. Uh, the two, two, two presidents prior to uh, Donald Trump, look at this next slide. Two presidents prior to Donald Trump uh, were, uh, there were, there were many of course before, before Donald Trump and before Joe Biden. But uh, there, there was Jimmy Carter, I don't know if some of you remember him, Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter was a president and he had a peace agreement that he made between, between uh, uh, Israel and the nation of Egypt, if you recall that. And Anwar Sadat lost his life, I think, over that, that peace agreement. So, so um, Jimmy Carter did that. And also Bill Clinton, both Democrats. They have also, Bill Clinton, Clinton also had a peace agreement between Israel, and that was between Israel and Jordan. But that, then all of a sudden, Donald Trump comes along and he declares, and, and I'm not talking about uh, the benefit of either Democrat or Republican. It's, this is not a political speech, but I, I address politics in the Bible because God uses politics to prove prophecy. That, I want you to understand that.
to, uh, the, those were two Democratic presidents, now here's a Republican president, and, and some of you may have liked Jimmy Carter or not liked him. I, I wrote to him when he was president, by the way, and I write to presidents, so I wrote to him, and he, he responded, you know, as others, other presidents have responded as well. But, uh, uh, but these men uh, have something to do with what God is preparing for. And of Donald Trump, as much as he was vilified around the world, nevertheless, he had something to do with it as well. Because he declared uh, the capital, Jerusalem, as the capital, and he moved the embassy there. And also, he, he made four peace agreements. Those other two presidents each made one. Uh, Donald Trump made four. And I'm thinking, boy, if he makes four peace agreements, must be God is moving, but with speed, the, the coming of the Lord. He's, he's, pushing, he's pushing the timetable. That's the way I looked at it anyway, uh, is what, what God was doing. This peace agreement was between Israel and the, United, the, the UAE, the United Arab Emeritus. Emeritus means like states, okay? But Bahrain, uh, Sudan, Morocco, uh, relationship with Israel, etc. All this happened because of what, what uh, God was trying to move quickly as far as the coming of the Lord is concerned. And, and, and you look at those, um, I, I, I teach a class on Saturday morning at Faith Church. Uh, and uh, I teach a class on uh, the, um, the end times, current events in, in as far as in t end times are concerned. And, and, I, and I brought up both these presidents, I brought up the others as well. Uh, but uh, you, you have, um, uh, you have a, a Donald Trump that, uh, that actually was really looked on very poorly around their world. And I'm thinking, well, why was that? Why do we have a president that changed everything? Uh, is, could it be that uh, the, 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 the thought that I was having that God had to move Israel, uh, rather move America out of the way is coming to pass? Because all of a sudden, when, uh, when Donald Trump uh, made these, um, he actually changed all these agreements that the United States had. And, and Germany, I know Ang Angela, uh, Ang uh, Angela Merkel, she all of a sudden made the statement after Donald Trump did this, and she said, we can't depend on the United States anymore to keep world order. And that was a big change. And then you had a Joe Biden, he comes along after that, and he does something that the world, the, the, just the, the whole, many people in the United States are going, what is going on? He moves, he moves the troops out of Afghanistan. And just like that, just quickly, almost overnight. And everyone thought that's the wrong thing to do. He did it wrong. Well, you can't look at that and speak evil about these guys because God is doing something behind the scenes. That's what's happening. It's not about, uh, it's not about Bill Clinton. It wasn't about Jimmy Carter. It wasn't about Donald Trump. And it's not about Joe Biden. It's about the prophetic plan of God and what he's doing through these men, these leaders of the country. God always uses the superpowers, like America. He always uses the leaders of those superpowers. And you can, I can point to practically every president in my lifetime, which I was born during the days of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Okay, he was president in the 30s and 40s. And, and so I, I, I could point probably to almost every president that each one of them had something little to do with the end times. God is moving America step by step in a plan that you and I can't even fathom. We don't even understand it. Uh, you, you have to understand what they're doing. So what, what um, basically Joe Biden did, he basically did the same thing that Putin did in, in Afghanistan. All of a sudden, after 10 years, 10 years in which Russia was in, was in uh, Afghanistan, they pulled out. And Joe Biden comes along, and after we were there 20 years, he pulls out. What happened? Well, because uh, it's a, it's a modern-day, my opinion anyway, a modern-day understanding that uh, the, that wall of separation between Israel and the armies of the East that are eventually going to come to Israel, Joe Biden didn't maybe do that. He, I don't know if he did it without thinking. I don't know if he did it, uh, he felt he did it right, or some people thought he did it wrong. That doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned, because God has prepared that part of the world because of the action of Joe Biden. Uh, and, and, and he was criticized for that, but I'm very reluctant to criticize presidents. I don't do that, you know, because what happened was that wall that was there to separate those armies from the east that was in Afghanistan that we had there as the armies of the United States that was moved out of the way by the action of Joe Biden and all of a sudden that's prepared for what Revelation chapter 16 says that the kings of the east are going to come. And what's, ki what's east of Israel? Uh, Iran, uh, Pakistan. Afghanistan, India, which has the, the second largest army in the world, third, or third largest army in the world, and China, which has the, the largest army in the world, man manpower-wise, that is, manpower-wise. All of a sudden, that door is open because the Lord is going to be coming soon, and those, that the ways of the kings of the east are going to come and invade the nation of Israel is what the book of Revelation talks about. So did Joe Biden do something wrong? I don't think so. 
You know, I think he's just operating. He, he may not even know why he did that. But in my opinion, he did it because God moved it to be so. No matter who he uses, uh, and, and all these presidents are used by God, whether you like their politics or you don't like their politics, that really doesn't matter. You, you gave your opinion in the voting booth, I trust you did, but now your opinion doesn't count anymore. <laughs> it doesn't count anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because God's doing this thing, is what I'm trying to tell you. All right. You with me so far? Well, the, the Antichrist, you know, you talk about the, the peace treaties that Jimmy Carter did, and, and the peace treaty that Bill Clinton did, and the peace treaties that Donald Trump did. There's going to come, those are all, those are all, uh, 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 something that's happening before the coming peace cre treaty of the Antichrist. The world is being prepared for the Antichrist covenant of peace. Look at this scripture that's found in Daniel chapter 9. It says there that he shall, return, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's talking about the Antichrist. The one week has King James. Your translation may say one seven, which is a seven year period, okay? Yeah. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one seven year period, one week. And the, in the middle of the week, he will cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Because what he's going to do is he's going to come in and he's going to make it a I believe this. Just like what Donald Trump did, just like what Bill Clinton did, just like what Jimmy Carter did, which, just like what I'm sure Joe Biden is going to want to do as well, that there is some kind of a peace agreement that we have to make between the Jewish people and the Arab world. Well, here comes the Antichrist. That's, that all, those, all those other peace agreements that I was talking about is only a setup for what's going to happen in the future. And these guys, I don't think these presidents really know that, I don't think anyway, you know. But uh, the Antichrist is going to set up some kind of an agreement between the Jewish people and the Arab people. That's what I think is going to be going to happen. And the, the Jews will get their temple, the Arabs will get their land as part of Israel, and not everybody believes that. Uh, I went to one church one time and I said that basic statement that there was going to be a two-state solution and God was going to make a provision for, for, the, for the Jewish people and for the Arab people in the nation of Israel. And the fur flew on that one too. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know that the pastor didn't believe that, uh, or else I wouldn't have said it. You know, because he, he didn't give me anything not to talk about. So I just made that statement. You know, and he got to me afterwards. He didn't believe that. Well, that's I'm sure debatable. My position, I'm sure, is debatable. You can debate me on that, but but I happen to think that the Antichrist will come, and he's going to set up some kind of an arrangement between the Jewish people who want their temple and the Arab people who want their land, and both of them. Both of them are, 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 are children or great-grandchildren, etc., etc., of, of, of Abraham in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. Uh, the, the Jewish people are the, sons, are the sons of Isaac, and the Arab people are the sons of Ishmael. That's right. That's what God is going to heal, and that's why he's coming back. That's why you're seeing the, the, all these peace arrangements going on. Carter and Clinton and Trump, and I think Joe Biden is going to do the same thing. This is an amazing time that we're living in. And it says there, he's going to cause, once he makes that agreement, the Antichrist, he, he's going to say, okay, that's it. In the middle of the seven years, I'm cutting it off, and he's going to have everyone to come and worship me. The, the false prophet's going to build a, a uh, statue in his memory, and, and for, not in his memory, but for him, and it's going to be in Jerusalem, we believe, that there's going to be this statue, and even that statue is going to be able to talk. Small wonder, we have computers that talk. We have phones that talk. Everything talks to us. So it'll be nothing. They'll set up this statue, and the statue is going to be able to talk. And it's going to be able to talk and say, worship the Antichrist. And the false prophet's going to say the same thing. Worship him. Worship him. And so he will cause that sacrifice that the Jews have in the temple. And the Arab people are, are looking for the Messiah as well. The Arabs are too. The, the Islam looks for the Messiah too. And so all of a sudden, he's, he will cut it in half. And for the overspreading of the, the abominations that I'm talking about, the worshiping of the, of the Antichrist, he shall make it desolate, even until it's, it's totally consumed, that it, it, it will be determined and poured out upon all the desolate people of the world that's going to be listening and living at that time. An amazing time. And, and you, are in, you are here to understand this and pray about this, and something that I have put my, and, uh, practically my entire ministry in study toward. An amazing time that we're living in. What, what's the church going through now? Look at this slide. Well, what's the church going through now? Uh, well, here's what, here's what we're living now. Many will come in my name saying, I'm Christ. Boy, let me tell you something. I've dealt with that back in the 70s. I, I started pastoring when John Kennedy was president in 1963 is when I started. Pre John Kennedy was still alive. And he was assassinated <coughs> that fall. 
And uh, I, I started, uh, just as soon as that happened, people came to me and asked me, what does this mean for America? Is this the end of the world? Is Jesus coming soon? That's what I think really started me on this, this study of the end time. But all of a sudden, I, I got bombarded because John Kennedy was assassinated. Well, but, but, so during that 70s period, the very next de decade, I, I, I had to deal with many false prophets who were saying they were the Christ. Uh, Re Reverend Sun Young Moon, uh, if you remember that name. Reverend Sun Young Moon, he, he determined, and I went, I went into his, into his uh, little office area that he had in the town I was in, he's, he's from, he was from Korea, but, but uh, those who were following him had a little house, uh, and they were, they were distributing his material and, and all that, and so I, I went, I said, I'm going to find out what this guy's about. So I went in undercover, and I didn't say who I was, you know. I just say, hey, I'm interested in studying your material, which I was. That wasn't, wasn't a lie, you know. I'm going to study what you guys talk about. So I guess they, they thought I was going to be a disciple, I don't know. <clears throat> so, so, I, so I went in there, and I got the material, and his belief was that Jesus Christ's mission to the earth failed. He wasn't supposed to be crucified. He was supposed to take over the kingdom on the earth. He was going to rule and reign on the earth. And he, he missed it. And God made a mistake, apparently, or something. And all of a sudden, Reverend Sun Young Moon was the new Jesus Christ. Oh. Uh, that was the 70s. Well, <laughs> Jesus died for your sins. And Reverend Sun Young Moon died for, I don't know what reason, natural causes, I guess. I don't know. I don't know for what reason. <laughs> anyway, you know, many will come. And saying, I'm the Christ, that's been happening for a long time, even before my time. And, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And, and, and no time in history has that meant so much as today. Because back in the Bible days, when there was a war, rumor of a war, the, 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 uh, one of the individuals who bought, brought messages to the king would get on his little donkey or horse, or, or he would run, he'd go, go back to the king. It would, may take him a whole day. It may him take, take him two or three days to tell the king, this is what's happening, you know. Or, or some segments of the army may go back and, and on horseback tell the king. It may take a whole day to get there and say, this is what's happening on the front. Today, that's not the case. We don't need horseback. We don't even need automobiles. You, you got it right in, right in your hand, your phone. Yeah. You, in seconds, you can hear of a war and rumor of war. Seconds. That's how fast things are moving in our, in our generation. Wars and rumors of wars. Don't be troubled because the end's not yet. And this is what we're passing through now. This is what you're living now. This is, this is what the church is going through. But also, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There's going to be famines. We, we have that trouble today. And look at pestilence. What about COVID? Yes. You know, it, it changed everything in the church, changed everything in the world. It's not just America that went through COVID. The entire world went through COVID. That's right. The entire world. And, and that's only a setup. Some, I get asked questions a lot. Is, is the vaccine, uh, the, um, is the, vaccine the, the mark of the beast? And I, I had someone, I had a bunch of people who Facebooked me or messaged me and asked me that. And people, when I go and talk to people, they ask me. Uh, and, and there was one lady that even wrote me from, uh, it messaged me from Australia. Someone that, that, that my family knows, you know, but wrote me from Australia and said, said uh, Pastor Sirian, I know that you're considered an expert in this. And so she said, let, let me ask you, is the jab, that's what they call it in Australia, <laughs> you know, the vaccine, they called it the, she called it the jab. It took me a minute to, or a couple seconds, I said, the jab, what is this? <laughs> oh, the vaccine. <laughs> uh, it is the jab the mark of the beast? And of course, I write back and say, no, it's not. Uh, the, the, the mark of the beast has everything to do with buying and selling. If you get the vaccine, and we don't recommend you get it or not get it, that's up to you, okay? I, it's me, I, I, anyway, I don't recommend one way or the other. It's up to you. But, but if, if you get the jab, if you get the vaccine, that doesn't mean you've received the mark of the beast. Because the, the mark of the beast, it's a 666, and I, I taught this in my class yesterday uh, at, at Faith Church. Uh, and um, uh, and I, I told him, that, uh, and I told him that what it's like in the Hebrew, the Arabic, and the Greek, uh, and and the, what each each number means. See, the, the Greek and the Arab, uh, the, the, the Greek and the Aramaic, and and um, uh, the, uh, the Hebrew, they don't have numbers in their in their system. They don't use numbers like we have numbers one, two, three, four, five, you know, 100, 200, etc., etc., etc. They have to use letters. And in my Hebrew classes that I took years and years ago, I had to learn this, that each letter stood for a number, or not, not every letter, but num there were certain letters that stood for numbers. So their number was, their number one was a letter. It wasn't a number. So you, you have to understand it. So it was something that was kind of like a, 
It was kind of like a parable that's found in the book of Revelation. But it, it talks about how we're going to recognize this 666 being the number of a man. That man was created on the sixth day. And so, so you, ha you have what, what the Antichrist is going to have to do is just like, just like the world has tried to gain control over COVID, so also the Antichrist is going to have to take control of the pestilences and the viruses and the plagues that's going to be in the earth. This is going to be his job. He's going to have to do that, like America did. Like uh, 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 President Trump uh, looked into researching it. President Biden uh, has looked into it and had all these teams, etc., studying all this. That's what the Antichrist is going to have to do. And so this is, and then, then the earthquakes. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. So, so we're really not really in the beginnings of sorrows because I believe that touches in the tribulation. But we're right there at the door. Tribulation is by the door, I believe. And the rapture, I think, is by the door as well. There are certain ones who, there, there are people who don't agree with me as far as the rapture. And I told my class yesterday, uh, which I, I believe in the, in the rapture at the beginning of the tribulation, but there are those who believe it's in the middle and those who believe it's at the end. And so I say, well, you're not going to get an argument from me. When I taught on the college level, I had students come to me and say, well, I don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. I say, well, that's okay. Formulate your own opinion. Come up with something. Right? Because the rapture, when you believe the rapture to take place doesn't, doesn't matter because if you believe the rapture is at the end and it's at the beginning, you're, you're not going to have to wait to the end to get raptured. You're going to go at the beginning. What, what's the difference, you know? So I don't get into a debate with that. Uh, when I put when I post it on Facebook, man, like I said, the fur flies, you know. But I, I let them fight with one another. All of a sudden, someone uh, makes something contrary a statement to what I said. All of a sudden, someone else rises up to defend me, and they're fighting, fighting back and forth. Before I know it, I have about twenty or thirty people fighting with one another. And I just I just stay clear. You know? I, just, I, I make my statement. That's it. Take it or leave it. You know. That's it. You know. So I don't argue. I don't argue the rapture because it's important that you're ready for the coming of the Lord. You're ready at all times. I happen to believe the rapture is at the beginning because as I, as I studied all, all of the positions, it's basically four positions, really. Uh, and uh, I came up with the conclusion it's before the, the rapture. Uh, there were those who were, were, were saved from a disaster on the earth. Like, like uh, look at this next slide. The, those who were removed before a disaster. Enoch was raptured before the flood. Uh, Noah and his family were saved. The, that, that next slide is, would be good, Spring. Uh, uh, yeah, there it is there. Those removed from disaster. Uh, Enoch was raptured before the flood. Noah and family saved from the flood. Yep. Lot was delivered from Sodom and Gomorrah. And the baby Jesus, Mary, and Joseph escaped to Egypt before Herod's murderous rampage. Yep. So, so it's possible. For those who say what's well, impossible, well, it's possible. Well, whether you believe it or not, that's up to you. But, but it's totally possible that God did this time a number of times in the Bible where he, where he had removed. I have basically 25 reasons why I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, I gave my class yesterday 10 of them, uh, 10 of the top uh, 25, uh, I thought anyway. But, uh, but save from wrath, even, even the words of, of, um, of Jesus, which we'll come to in a moment. But look, look who was saved from the, look what the Bible says about being saved from wrath. The next slide. Much more than in Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. It says that much more than being now justified by his blood, that's you, uh, being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Romans 5, 9, 9, 5, Romans 5, 9 and also in 1 Thessalonians 1, 10, and to wait, we are to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. And finally, the words of Jesus about escape, which I started to mention, the words of Jesus. And these words are, are taken from from Luke's Gospel, and, and it says this, Take heed to yourself, uh, lest your hearts, being overcharged with drunkenness, cares of this life, and that day will come upon you unawares. For as, as a snare shall it come upon the whole earth. Watch, therefore, pray always, that ye may be able, you may be accounted worthy to escape all, the, all, those, uh, all these things. Uh, and for, for a snare it shall come on the whole earth, uh, all right, does it continue on? Um, no, whole earth, there it is. No, go back, I'm sorry, go back. Um, it, it shall uh, be upon the whole earth. Watch therefore, pray always, that ye may be able, uh, you may be accounted worthy to escape all those things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And when, I, when people attack me because of this, they call it the escapism clause, the escapism, uh, you know, even Jesus used that word. And that, of course, that's King James language. It may be different than your translation. But there's something in which the Lord says, you're going to be able to bypass this. You're going to be able to escape this. As long as you're not caught up in drunkenness, 
The cares of, and it lists a whole bunch of things. I left some of it out because it was too long of a scripture. But there's the drunkenness and the cares of this life. And that day comes upon you. You're totally unexpected the whole, of the whole thing. But you have to be aware and say, Lord, I want to be able to be, I want to be willing and able to be ready at the coming of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to go to mbcol-ny.com to connect with us. Or you can find us on Facebook and YouTube. Leave a comment, subscribe, and follow us. We would love to hear from you.